aperture. Um, so as George was saying, I was born and raised in Jerusalem, Israel, and um, I started photographing my mother when I was 15. Um, actually, I was first in, in different kind of art forms, and it was um, a very big thing for me to, yeah, sorry, to discover photography because I was playing the piano and I did theater and drama and I always was envious of the other kids that could, that were passionate about music or, or theater. Um, so even though I started to photograph at 15, <clears throat> I was already old enough in my mind to see the difference. Um, and it was just one afternoon I took my father's camera, um, looking for something to photograph. I entered my mom's room. She was waking up from an afternoon nap and photographing her without knowing or thinking or wanting to make art. Um, and something very significant happened in the way that I could see so much more of her and connect to her. And so I started to photograph my mother um, in black and white with my father's camera. And it became another way for us. It really got us closer, which was part of the reason why I named my first book Closer. Um, it, it got us closer to one another and making the time to take the pictures and then looking at the pictures and arguing about what they said um, made me see and know so much more of her that I decided that I want to see the world with a camera and I decided to be a photographer. Um, so then I went to the Israeli army for two years I went to Betel El and moved to New York. So these are images from Closer, from the first book. Um, that was my mom. And uh, again, she was, she was a very, I was very fortunate that she was the first person I photographed because like every Jewish mama, she thought her kids are geniuses and everything they do she needs to celebrate. Um, this is Mother Puts on My Lipstick. And she totally gave herself to me, opened up to me, and I opened up to her. And there were many things that I did later in my work that I first saw at my mom or on my mom's body. And many moments that I wanted to travel to for my childhood, and I did it with her, through her. And it was only when I started photographing the other family members, this is my father, that I realized that no, I can't dive into everyone's life like I did with my mom. And people usually have limits. And I learned to respect those limits, sometimes beg to push them, but mostly respect them and be sensitive to also the family members that didn't want to be photographed at all. Um, this is mother is worried. And I began to see how uh, because when I came to school at Betel El, I, I thought that I can't photograph my family anymore because now I have to do important work um, because I'm in art school. Uh, but I've learned over the years and with the help of some of my professors to see how the work, even though it's drawn from the most personal, can be very universal and people can relate to my images from their own childhood or relationships. Um, this is me and my brother. Um, he used to cut my hair until I was, until I got married, he was my hairdresser. And this is after he cut my hair. And there is so much sensuality in this image. Like many other images, I think I could see much more of my life and of the world if I photograph it. If I take the time to look through the viewfinder and focus and froze, like have a frozen moment and look at it. So I saw this image and I was, I was shocked. Um, I met my husband in art school in Betalel and he comes from a family of photographers. He grew up with photography. His grandparents are very important photographers in Israel. Um, on top of it, he was always walking around naked and wouldn't mind to be photographed. So I decided he's gonna be my husband. Um, this is PMS. And this is an image I took two years later. 
but the the Oedipus element here, the connection between the two really struck me. I didn't aim for it, but it was there. Um, like many images, I feel that they, they're like dreams. They bring my unconsciousness and the things that I fear or don't want to see, and it's, it's all there in the work. This is my mom. Uh, explaining to me about men and what they want, <laughs> making fun of men. She has those provocative moments when she's like, I did this and that. And now that she's divorced, she's out of control. Um, after Closer, I did this body of work crisis about, as George was saying, the crisis in my marriage um, and a period of back, excruciating back pain. Um, I did a series of self-portraits that were called Pain, number one through 24. Um, and photographed my husband and I through um, a very, we almost divorced my husband at some point, moved out and he was dealing with addiction. I had another man in my life. And to my surprise, I managed to photograph those moments and to my even bigger surprise with his encouragement, I photographed the series. Most of it, like anything in my life, most of the moments are not being photographed. I'm not photographing a lot, um, but I, I managed to photograph it. And as I said before with my mom, it was another way of communication. At some point of our crisis, photography became the only communication we had. Um, we were taking pictures, or I would take pictures and make long details, titles, and put them on the wall. Um, this is First Tears Over Another Man. And after argument. Here, Iran was totally stoned, so I took this image for him. I knew I wanted him to see it, and I titled it for him, but it stayed the title, um, and if I don't get enough attention, and I put it on the wall. This image was, um, I think, one of the first images that made me understand that if things are being done for the camera, they're not less honest at all. Um, and we weren't talking in that day, and I was taking self-portraits in the bathtub, and Iran just came in and, and touched my face like this, which annoyed me at the time because I thought it was, he's just doing it for the camera, which he was, but then I was stuck with this tender, loving image to look at, and with questions to him, which he answered. Um, but I've also realized over the years that even though photography can be very therapeutic for me, it doesn't always make it interesting. Um, so I, I'm a very tough editor of my work. Um, this is my second book, which title, Diary of a Dancer. I was a professional belly dancer for 15 years. Um, actually, it was my main income in the first eight or so years of living in New York. And I, I wanted to photograph my journey as a belly dancer. Um, the way I photographed closer didn't really work for this body of work, so I changed the camera, I changed the film. Um, like any other project that I started, it always starts with failing, <laughs> trying and trying and not succeeding until I find the right way of working, the, my voice. Um, and for three years I photographed, at first I photographed with a self-timer and a tripod. Only in, in New York, you can put a tripod in front of yourself in the subway and do your makeup and take self-portraits and no one is looking at you because it's you're just another weirdo in the city. Um, at some point, I also wanted to photograph myself while dancing. Um, and I started with handing the camera to strangers, which didn't work. But eventually, I took my husband with me. Um, at first, being very controlling of the images because I wanted them to be mine. But because in belly dancing, you can start the show one way and end up in the other part of the room on a table with a baby in your hand and a hummus plate on your other hand. Um, and 
dollars are being thrown at you, you can't plan. Um, at some point, he started with the images I plan and continued with his own images that became a part of the book. But this book wasn't as successful as Closer. I think it wasn't as universal. The theme was very specific and the place was very specific. And so it's my, out of the three books, it's my non-successful child. Waiting to be picked up by my agents. The dollars I didn't get, they went to the club owner. I'm still annoyed. Um, my main income today comes from shooting for magazines. Um, maybe the show, Matt, where are you? Maybe the show on the 27th will change it. <laughs> Matt is here from Edwin Howe Gallery. He came to support me. Thank you for coming. <laughs> um, so I, when I came here in 95, I shed blood and tears to get the galleries to pay attention to me and went to other galleries and it was before the internet days um, and dropped my slides and all that and it was, it, it was really hard. I was also an immigrant. Eventually I got recognition and I got solo shows and, and then I started to be approached by, by the magazine world. As George and I were talking before, George was one of the first people to approach me about an assignment. Um, which I turned down for Vibe magazine, he thought, what did you think, George, that I was like, <laughs> or maybe you, you, you don't, don't say what did you think, <laughs> maybe it's better. I was so terrified and so insecure. The way that I worked so far was, even though I did a lot of work, it was very intimate, my family at home, the people I knew, if I failed, no one would see it. I just wouldn't show it. Um, and I was also not one of the photographers that had, was shooting with large formats and 10 strobes. And so I was just scared. Um, but after a while, like, like everything I've learned in life, I have to do things even though I'm scared. I can't wait to stop being scared. It doesn't work that way. Um, I was approached by Big Magazine. They wanted me to do a fashion story about fashion and space and I suggested to them to work in the way that I was shooting my mom and the clothes on her body. And to my surprise, and I still sometimes use the excuse of I'm an artist, they agreed and so I did this eight page story. Um, photographing at home with me and my best friend photographing our bodies. Um, and it worked and I got paid then I did this campaign for Selfridges London. I don't do a lot of ad campaigns because usually they're much more commercial than my work. Um, but this campaign was a theme campaign. There wasn't a product to sell. Um, and again, I suggested they flew me to London and said that they love Closer. If I'm not going to shoot the campaign, I'm gonna, they're going to hire a photographer to shoot the same way that my images are in Closer. So I was like, no, no, I'm taking the campaign. It was also much more money than editorial. And I did this campaign in London. That was all, again, my friends, people I knew, if I needed a redhead or a different kind of skin tones, I just would get the people. Um, this was the first assignment that pushed me out of my comfort zone. I was approached by W and they sent me to photograph Agnes Martin in New Mexico. So this was a real photo shoot. I had a call sheet, I had an assistant, um, itinerary, all the, the, the serious things. And I went and photographed and met Agnes. And it was an amazing experience. Um, and then I started to work more, um, shooting different people for different magazines. Because a lot of the photographers that I knew talked about commercial job as a way of making a living while you're making the important artwork, artwork. But I realized that it's not less important. I mean, maybe some jobs are not that great, but for me it was really a way to learn 
and grow technically and as an artist and learn how to work with photo editors and be pushed to different directions and relate to people even if I have an hour with them or if I have four days with them. And so it, it, was, it was really and it still is a very meaningful part of, of how I see myself as a photographer. And slowly I started to become more focused and uh, photograph more families. This assignment was given to me by George. Sorry, George, I always talk about you. You're just never there. It's funny that you're here. Um, and it was rock stars and their mothers. And it was um, such a wonderful... I mean, I had the license to dive into another family and photograph the family, which is what I do with my own work. Maybe not to the depth that I go with, with my mom or my children or my husband, but for a few hours, I could photograph the love and, and, and the funny moments. This was a funny moment of Dave Grohl's mom saying he's a genius. John Legend. So over the last few years, most of the assignments I do are, have to do with themes that are in my work, with family, with relationships, with love, um, with frustration, with intimacy. Um, this was an assignment about a father who is working in the post office during the night and takes care of his um, son who is a young man with a locked-in syndrome. This was another campaign I did, one of the few that I've done. Vaseline gave a new product to this woman in the middle <clears throat> um, in Kodiak, Alaska. And she gave it and spread it through Kodiak. And when they hit 500 people, we went to Alaska and photographed 225 people telling their story, telling me who they are through their skin. So it was real people, families. This is a soldier who came back from Iraq. Um, and it was, it was just amazing, again, to dive into other people's lives and, and photograph it. And more recent stories, this is a home birth by Ina Mae Gaskin, who is a, um, she supports home birth and she wrote many books about it. Pre-psychotic children for the New York Times magazine. <clears throat> a story about a family where the father had a mental illness. This is the daughter and actually she wrote the story and I spent a long day with the family Anthony Weiner, when he decided he's running for mayor, a very challenging. I usually don't shoot celebrities because I'm just not good in what needed to be done. I'm, I'm not necessarily good in making people look pretty or I'm good in making people be who they are, which is usually, usually not what celebrities want to do. Um, and he's a famous persona and he was going to declare that he's running for mayor. And there was a lot of stress, you can imagine. But at the end of the day, it was just a family with their fears and worries and, you know. And this was a very recent story I did for People magazine that just came out. Um, so this is the last body of work I'm going to talk about, um, but I'm going to show more images. Um, so this is mother. At 2003, I got pregnant, and in a very natural way, I started photographing my pregnancy. Um, what I feel is a continuation of, of closer in a way so far while I was pregnant. I looked at my body and at my life. I had a very happy pregnancy. Um, 
not so happy after I gave birth. I had that ended in an emergency C-section. Here I was induced. Um, I got into the 10th month with twins, which is unusual. I had to be induced. And I remember this moment. I mean, like all of us, photographers or not, I want to photograph moments because I want to keep them somehow. I know it's an illusion, but I don't want to lose them because we lose moments all the time. And I think most photographers are even more anxious about that, and that's why they become photographers. Um, so I was sitting here thinking, in a few hours, I'm going to be a mother of two. I have to photograph it. Um, and also, there was a beautiful daylight, medical light in the room. And once I discovered, even though I'm with the IV and I'm monitored and I'm in pain, I was like, there is a beautiful light here. So I had to take this picture while the nurse is yelling at me. It looks like such a serene, quiet moment. But the background noises are like, Miss Carucci, we're trying to deliver twins today. Um, I had to take this picture. Um, and then I got into the emergency C-section. My husband brought the camera. I didn't want to bring the camera, so I was yelling at him while we're <laughs> being, how do you say it, rolled to the surgery room. And he took this one picture that he said he took for me. And then I became a mother of two. <laughs> Um, and I think something really changed in me as a photographer when, when I became a mother. First, it was a very intense experience of many different contrasting emotions living side by side. Um, I was in pain, and I had a hormone drop. I was down, but I was loving and amazed by my children and everything was just happening at once and it was such a complex and intense and layered experience um, that it made me really angry at photography and art. I was like, where are those images? Um, I think I really started taking pictures out of anger. I was like, this is, I can't just, all I could remember was the Madonna and child images or beautiful, perfect celebrities' images after they give birth and they're thin and happy and their babies are beautiful and happy. everything is perfect. So I was very upset. <laughs> I was upset in general. Um, and I decided that I really, I, I want to photograph it the way I feel it and the way that it is because I started to, t to talk to other mothers and what I was going through was what they were going through in you know, different stories. Um, so I really dived in, um, photographing, photographing it all. And, and again, don't get me wrong, it's the most beautiful thing that ever happened, happened to me. And the love for children is the greatest love we can experience, I think. But it is so complicated. Being tired, but wanting to breastfeed. The s and no, I'm kidding. It's a nursing bra. My nursing bra. My new belly that I didn't like. Um, also, I wanted to photograph the, the strong sensual connection to the children. My daughter and my son. Um, and my emotions were so strong but I still wanted to create a body of work that will be universal and that other parents can relate to or other people that were children. We were all children at some point. So the things that I felt, like the strong sensual connection and um, excluding my husband physically for a very long time, I would just ask other mothers and they and their honesty gave me the license. They're like, of course, who wants the husband when you can bush with the kids all day long and I was like, okay, I'm normal. I'm going to take a picture of it. I also became the quickest photographer ever because, I mean, already I felt guilty about photographing my children and thinking of showing the work. Um, I had to edit out of the book the fully nude images of them to ease my guilt. And in a moment like that, I was like, she's so striking. I would take one frame put the camera down and pick her up. Most of the time I couldn't even take one frame because I was feeding and bathing and holding and comforting. Um, and I felt like 
the mom is winning all my other women. She's winning the sexy woman who is dead. Um, she's winning the photographer. So I'm, the compromise would be to just take a quick one frame. Also, my daughter has it. She's very strict. She used to tell me, not anymore, um, mom, two frames. And then I would get the two frames, and I'm like, can I get more? And she would say, if you're a professional photographer, two frames should be enough. <laughs> so I really became a very quick and focused photographer, um, photographing those moments very quickly. Um, and also with kids, in my other bodies of work, I was looking for the dramas. I wanted to photograph the everyday dramas that we all have in life. But with kids, every day is a big selection of dramas from cutting the bangs, that for her was a horrified experience, to taking a bath with my son. This is my mom and my daughter who are very close. And this is the two of them again. My son. <clears throat> and a lot of my best photographs were just given to me by things that my kids did. Um, this was taken with a four by five and two strobes. And um, I used to prepare, there were things that I saw and I used to prepare for them so when they happen again, I could photograph them. And I wanted to photograph Ed and putting his head on my lap and I would put the earplugs before he's taking a shower. He couldn't have his ears wet, but he decided to look under my underwear. And so he gave me a much more interesting picture that again, I think is pretty universal. Kids are running around, they wanted to see how we look, and they're curious. Another thing I ask other moms, when you pee, do your children go and sit in your lap? And about six out of 10 said, yeah, they do it all the time. So I was like, okay, I can take a picture. And some of the pictures I feel are more about motherhood and some are about their childhood or maybe the way that I see it and things that are supposed to be fun but end up being scary and birthday parties that ends with tears my daughter in my husband's lap for the young women who saw my belly before and are thinking about never getting pregnant most of it went away, and it looks better now. So please get pregnant if you want, and don't blame me for it. <laughs> you see that my husband, that I neglected in many ways, in a way, is making his way back to the images. This was the first time, I think the pictures are taken in many different ways. Some are very planned, and sometimes I just go out with a camera and an on-camera strobe. And this was in McDonald's, but a very meaningful moment in McDonald's uh, we have. And this was when my daughter didn't let me to go into the bathroom with her. She just said, Mom, I can do it on my own. And she closed the door on me. I managed to take this one frame, she closed the door. And I was crying there, thinking about her going to college and her wedding day. It's very hard to be a parent. I really feel like you get to see the best of you and things that you never saw are in you, you never thought were in you, how much you can be loving and, and giving and thinking about another child, but you also really see the worst of you. Um, it's every day is a challenge. This is in Toys R Us. I, I tried to take a self-portrait of me. I felt that even though sometimes I'll put on my makeup and wear a nice dress and I go out, I can never be the old me. I'm always carrying my children with me and thinking about 
their lunch, if I did the lunch and if it's in their bag, and about the play date and the test and this and that. Um, which I realize my husband does and he can leave home and just disconnect for a while and come back. So I try to make a portrait of it. <sighs> a very torturing ceremony that happens every evening <clears throat> where my daughter hates me for brushing her hair. He was annoyed that she got to go on the computer first, so he just had to let it out. She didn't see him, but I did. My father and my son. It was hard to catch a night moment. I tried it for a while. Um, just what's happening when you have little children at night and how the nights can be just this hazy mix of crying and being tired and trying to function. My daughter kicking me out of my bedroom. She decided my husband can't have a beard because it's weird enough that we're immigrants to her. Um, so with a beard, it's even weirder. And she cut his beard. And I, funny enough, I started photographing more outside. This is called what Eden saw in the subway. Um, and when I saw it happening to my work, um, I didn't know why, finally, after so many years of mainly photographing my family indoors, I'm photographing outside. Um, and I think it was because they really made me feel that this is home. I mean, I was here for about a decade before I had kids, but now I can't talk about America or Americans as they, it's, it's my children that are Americans and New York is home and they're going to a public school, to PS41. And I, it's just like I gave birth to two roots. Um, so I think that was one thing. The streets of New York became home. But also I think with kids, as opposed to adults, um, my work is after intimacy and, and like very deep moments. And those happen outside with kids as well. They don't put the mask or the facade like we do. They cry and yell at me and fight with each other, also when we're outside. So when we go out the door, nothing really changes. I'm, I got upset at her, but you can see that he's pretending to be more hurt than he really is to get her in trouble. It's called, I call this, image, I titled it Clipping Nails, but my husband called it Mommy Dearest, if anyone has seen the film. There are so many things I said I won't do when I used to be critical of other parents. And again, it's the humbling of being a parent. Because um, I used to see parents dragging their kids and the kids are seeing beautiful things and they want to talk about the world and the mean parents is dragging them. But now, of course, it's a daily thing. We have to be at school on time. We have to go places and I try to capture it. I said I'll never take sides. I will let them figure out their own fights and I take sides every day. And another thing I wanted to do is when I edited the book, I wanted to include the joyful moments, the smiling, happy moments. Um, I wanted to include it all. Um, and I didn't stay away from images because they might not be artsy enough or serious enough. Um, I wanted to include those moments like my son running to, to my lap um, and smiling. And 
this is it. If anyone have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Oh, so, you know, I don't think I've ever asked you about your procedure, but it looks as though someone is capturing you when you're an actress. So, do you decide you want to take a picture and you just allow for chance? I, I do both. I mean, I usually have something in mind, mm -hmm. and sometimes this something happens. Um, I want to take a certain moment, but sometimes this something doesn't happen, so I take whatever happens in front of the camera. So. In this case, we were walking yeah. to actually a photographer. So I took the camera with me on a tripod with a self timer. And every few blocks, I stop it. Like I run ahead, I stop it. Yeah. And my husband is pressing the self timer. So I make the frame, I go back. And I do act back, but I'm reacting my life. I'm not like a character, and you know, I'm going back to my life a word that I'm photographing, but I'm, I'm just going back into moments that are happening. And the digital, the switch to digital in 2008 really helped me because he is continuously pressing the self timer. Now it's also my children. One of them will continuously press the self timer while I'm with the other one. Or with, they're helping me to do a body of work of me and my husband now in our 40s. Yeah. They're, they're continuously pressing the soft timer and then I won't even copy it. Everything from the card, I just copy what I want. Does it interest you or will it interest you to be more preoccupied with photographing your process so people know how you invent your pictures? What if, I mean, there, there's a quality of wondering how you shot your pictures, which I mean, increasingly is obvious in this book, which seems much looser right. than the previous two. If, I don't know if it's interesting. It's such a long, repetitive process. Mm -hmm. I mean... You think it's inherently just sort of the mechanics and you yeah, think... Yeah, I don't know if it's interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the moment and so I have to, we all, we have to get the light and buy the camera and do all those things and put it there and take more and more pictures and take many bad, boring pictures to get this uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, but I didn't think about it. Do you see any um, parallels with your your work or your preoccupation with family and say Tina Barney's work? Not so much Tina Barney, but many other photographers like um, Nan Golden or Sally Mann, and Tierney Giron, and Emmett Goen, and Nicholas Nixon. Women of your generation, roughly. She's also, then, I mean, just the work that I connect to. Uh -huh. um, yeah, Richard Billingham, there are many, yeah. many great photographers. Uh, do you pour over the work of people you admire, or do you, would you rather not know too much? Do I what? Pour over them, pour over their work. What does um, that mean? That means it's an expression meaning... I'm improving my English right now. You, uh, you dive in and you want to know Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, you want to look at the of pictures. Course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. When did you decide that this body of work is now complete, or at least complete enough to publish? It's interesting that you're asking him because. <laughs> well, right, right. And I might create more work of the kid um, because I was approached by Pristel about five years ago or even six um, and Kurt Holtz who saw the work came to meet me and really loved the work but I told him I'm not ready I'm not ready at some point he threatened me that it's going to end up as a Kindle only edition because <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting so much and I don't know if you remember this image of my daughter there is an image, she came back from a party at school, which we were with her, my husband was with her, and they did her makeup, and I just looked at her and felt, and in the next weeks, I felt that things are shifting. 
So it wasn't like I decided on a number of years. I just felt that things are shifting and the stage of them being one unit with me that is so strong in my feeling and I hope in the pictures is beginning to end and they're growing up and growing apart. So that's why I'm saying maybe I'll continue to a different project when they're teenagers. Because right now I took a break and they're very offended that I stopped photographing them. <laughs> um, but I think it was that feeling that something significant is changing and I have to call it a body of work or maybe chapter A or but it's 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 moving along. Right. Right. Yes. Um, do you look at the work with your children? What do you mean? Do you look at the photographs with them and or their comments or um, experiences? Michelle? Or Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? You look so young. I was like, is it her? Is it a 22 year old student? <laughs> um, you look really young. Um, thank you for coming. If I look at the work with them, yeah, of course. Actually, my daughter, I said that I edited out the nude images of them, and they're mainly when they're younger, and we just looked at all of it together, and she said, Mom, that was totally stupid that you edited those images out, because who cares, she's telling me, who cares? I'm like, so young here, and I'm like, when you're 21, maybe we'll do the rated R version of Mother, but right now, um, so yeah. And we had conversations about the work, especially with my daughter. My son, it, it, he's just, someone just asked him a week ago, how is your mom's book? And he said, I haven't even looked through it so much. He's like, this is what mom does, and sometimes I need to stand there and be photographed. He doesn't care. But with her, I have deep, intense, meaningful conversations. <laughs> In crisis, yeah. Usually, I will, and that's how I think I miss a lot of good photographs. Usually, if I think that it's not the right moment or I'm exploiting someone or a moment, I will just not take it. Um, but sometimes I really have to fight it because when I push to those moments, it's where, when I get the more interesting images. But it was overall photographing my family and photographing crisis was a positive thing in, in the relationships I have. And it definitely helped us, gave us excuses to talk. Also a lot of bad, boring images that I would never show here that we just had to look at. and. It, it was helpful. So that's why I said that I also understood that some images can be very important for me, but they're not necessarily good images or interesting enough for other people. Anyone else? <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, the guilt thing is such a big, it's such a big thing. It's just that the, the, uh, the feeling guilty became such a big part of who I am in general as a mom that the photography is like the least of it. I'm not there, I didn't take them a tutor, my English is not good enough, that's why they're not good in the right. I mean, it's just, uh, why did I yell at them? I'm impatient, I'm like, it's nonstop, and I'm photographing them. It just became like another thing in the list. So I'm trying to accept the guilt as a part of being a mother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they do deny me of images, and I sometimes react very badly. Um, I'm like, with all I do for you, and I'm like cleaning up for you, and cook, and now I want to take a picture. I'm a photographer. This is my land. This is what you're saying that you can't stand it for a minute. And then my husband is like, Eleanor, <laughs> you like grow up, um, or I beg. There is also the other. You know what? If you let me take a picture. I'll buy you the Lego that you want. So there is the 
driving out. It's, it's not pretty. Maybe I shouldn't get into it so much. And sometimes they're just like, no, mom, we're too busy, not now, and they just go to the room. And I'm like, well, if you're sending help, I have the same experience, so now you can go to rest. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's helpful to, to share. Right. Actually, with friends, I have the same problem. So I feel that I can either photograph the, the deep moments I want to get with the people that I'm willing to die for, like if it's really like six or seven people, or when it's on an assignment and I have the the magazine, excuse. <clears throat> I didn't manage to do, and I tried, good series of work with my friends because exactly what you're saying. I'm like, I, I don't feel that I can dive into their lives the same way. Um, but I do manage to do it sometimes with magazine jobs because I'm a stranger and I'm with them only for two days or six hours. They really open up to me and I open up to them and something very special happens and then I'm gone. So it does happen in some of the great jobs, um, but, but not, not, not with friends for some reason. And the other element is just, I think the cultural difference is very important because I knew that some of the photographs with my father in the nude were provocative, but a lot of what seemed provocative here, I didn't at all think was provocative because in Israel it, it is a little looser and a lot of my friends saw their parents naked and in and out of the shower. It's not such a big deal, and especially among the women. I saw my mom and, and grandma and aunts. We were always naked, so it wasn't, I didn't do something. I mean, I just photographed the way they raised me. That's how the images look like. It's not like I created a reality that wasn't there, so. <laughs> Yes. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so Mother has received an impressive amount of media attention in the last few months, um, mostly really well received. Uh, despite you removing the images you thought were maybe too controversial of your children in the nude, <clears throat> have you received any negative criticism about perhaps the work being too controversial? Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, in, in, in articles, but also in, uh, <coughs> in comments that I read about articles that are about me, and it's fine. I mean, I don't, I gave a lot of thought to the book and to what I want to say, and I feel actually that what worry people, I am worried that this is worrying to people, that this kind of love and, and, and closeness and physical openness, not sexuality, not, you know, but sensuality that I'm showing here, if people are worried about it, they're really fucked up, to my opinion. So I'm worried about them, and I hope they go to therapy and solve their problem. 
to make a better society.